There have been many European prospects who had all the hype and the skills in their youth careers, but that potential never materialized on the highest level. Some of them went from NBA prospects to average players in Europe. Others either had disappointing NBA careers or even had to finish playing basketball early. Let's look at the biggest European prospects who completely flopped. And trust me, these aren't going to be names you all know too well like Darko Milicic. To kick things off we got Frederick Weiss. You and probably the rest of the world remember him as that guy from the 2000s Olympics who got dunked over by Vince Carter. But before that infamous moment, Weiss was a hyped up prospect back in France playing for Limoges. At 21 years of age, he was averaging 13.4 points, 7.3 rebounds per game and was selected to the French League All-Star Game. The NBA seemed like the inevitable next step for the 218cm center. And so he got drafted 15th overall by the New York Knicks in the 1999 draft. Knicks fans weren't exactly thrilled. They wanted Ron Artest, who was still on the board. Instead, they got Vice and the media even dubbed him the French disappointment before he even set foot in Madison Square Garden. At that time he was known as a solid shot blocker with decent mobility, but as you know things didn't go as planned. In the 2000 Olympics, Weiss took the wrong part in that legendary dunk of death. That dunk was definitely a mental blow. In interviews, Weiss later admitted that that moment haunted him forever. To this day, he is still remembered more for that one dunk than anything else he accomplished on the court. Weiss didn't play a single game in the NBA, deciding to stay in Europe, where he had a career that was decent but unremarkable compared to the expectations. His NBA dream was over before it began, and the Knicks fans never got over it. Then we've got Nikolos. Ni Tsikitishvili. Tsikitishvili. Then we got Nikolos Tsikitishvili. <laughs> Then we've got Nikolas Tskitishvili, I finally said it. His name became known from his youth days at Georgia and Slovenia. In his last year before the NBA, he got the spotlight on him in Treviso, historically one of the top basketball programs for European prospects. Here's a little snippet from his scouting report. Every team in the NBA traveled to Treviso to see him play. They all came away impressed. Isn't very often that you find a big man with the type of skills he possesses. So, what were those skills that got him drafted 5th overall by the Denver Nuggets in 2002? Denver scouts and coaches saw him as a true unicorn. A 2 meter 11 forward with shooting and ball handling skills. Someone you just wouldn't find over 20 years ago. But it turned out to be all hype. Skitishvili barely saw playing time, averaging just 2.9 points per game over his NBA career, which ended in 2006. His 3-point percentage was an awful 23% and his defense was pretty much non-existent. His coaches even doubted his work ethic, which was a major red flag for a top 5 pick who was still raw and got picked for his potential. Skitishvili's struggles also came at a time when international players still faced stereotypes and his failure didn't help. Eventually he came back to Europe where he had an okay career, but again, he never came close to being the kind of player that he was projecting to be. And as you could have guessed, Denver's fans still look at him as one of the biggest draft misses in franchise history. Jarko Chabarkapa was another first round pick who just couldn't catch a break. Coming out of Yugoslavia, he was raising his stocks whilst playing in the YUBA league for Bio Petrol and Budućnost. Similarly to Tsikitishvili, Chabar Kappa was seen as a versatile forward who could shoot and handle the ball a little bit while standing at 2 meters 11. If you cannot tell already, the NBA was really hyped on tall European shooting bigs like Dirk Nowitzki or Pau Gasol in the early 2000s. So Jarko was selected 17th overall by the Phoenix Suns in the 2003 draft. The idea was that he could add depth to the Suns frontcourt as a backup to Amari Stoudemire, but injuries wrecked his career before he could even get a real chance. After a couple of seasons, he was traded to the Golden State Warriors, where he continued to struggle with his health and never found his footing. In total, Chabarkapa played 150 games in three NBA
NBA seasons, averaging 4.3 points and 2.1 rebounds. In fact, injuries had such a big impact that the 26-year-old took a couple of years off of professional basketball. He then returned to Budućnost in 2009, but only played a few games there and retired at the age of 28. Before I talk about someone whose story I'm familiar with the most, I'll just remind you to check out our second channel called Outside the NBA. There we do similar kinds of videos as we do here, but all about the NBA. I'll leave an American version of this video called Biggest NBA Prospects That Didn't Work Out in the end screen of this video. Now the Lithuanian guy I was referencing before, Martinas Andruskevičius. Early in his career, whilst playing for Žalgiris second team and eventually the first team, he had NBA scouts and teams excited. Andruskevičius was a massive 2 meter 18 centimeter center with surprising agility and skill for his size. In Lithuania, he was touted as the next big thing, with some people even calling him the next out of the Sabonis. And the comparison is sort of understandable looking back. Just like Sabonis, Andruskevičius was freakishly tall, agile, had a soft touch around the rim and was able to shoot from further out. Of course, he was nowhere near as athletic, didn't have such a passing vision nor was as talented in the post, but the raw potential was clear to everyone. Despite being projected to be picked between 12th and 22nd, Andruskevičius got drafted in the second round in 2005 by the Orlando Magic. He was quickly traded to the Cavaliers, where he played just six games and averaged these whopping stats. Shortly after, he got traded to the Chicago Bulls, but immediately was sent down to D-League for development. There, something tragic happened. During a practice with the D-League team, he was hit by a teammate in a physical altercation, leaving him with a severe head injury and in a coma for several days. That injury was the end of his NBA journey. He did manage to recover and continue his career in Europe for the next 12 years. But even back there, Andruskevičius only played at lower tier competitions where he was support too. Which now makes those Arvida Sabonis comparisons look bad. Next, let's talk about another 2 meter 18 centimeter tower, Jake Tsakalidis. The Georgian Greek center began his professional career in Ajax Athens at the age of 17. He was showing early greatness in the post and help Ajax win a couple of cup titles. The thing with Sakalidis was that he started playing basketball quite late in his teens, so it seemed like there's a lot of future potential left in him. Especially seeing how at that height and weight Sakalidis managed to move around the court and how quickly he picked up the skills to perform against grown men at a young age. The Phoenix Suns believed the hype the most and in the year 2000 chose Sakalidis with the 25th pick, but his game didn't translate as well as hoped. While he looked quite mobile back in Greece, Sakalidis couldn't really keep up with the faster NBA tempo. He had a couple of seasons with the Suns, later with the Grizzlies, but struggled to stay relevant in the NBA. After seven seasons in the NBA, Sakalidis ended up with a reputation of a serviceable but forgettable big man. His return to Europe wasn't any better either, as he only played one season with Olympiakos Piraeus in 2007. Again, another guy to retire early at the age of just 28. Finally, we have another guy drafted in the same year as Sakalidis and as Jerome Moiseau. The French prospect is the only guy on this list who actually attended an American high school and later college. Moiseau played two years at UCLA with guys like Baron Davis and Matt Barnes. There he impressed scouts nationwide with his out-of-this-world athleticism. A 2 meter, 8 centimeter power forward who would protect the rim, snatch rebounds and bring defensive intensity. Offensively, he wasn't the most skilled, but was able to compensate with his high energy and a decent touch from the mid-range. Moisaw sounded like a full package who was ready to play right now, so the Boston Celtics picked him 11th overall in that same week 2000's draft. After being drafted, Moisaw's biggest problem was that he lacked the focus and work ethic to advance his game forward. He quickly went from a prospect to a journeyman in the NBA. Moisaw kept bouncing around NBA teams each year and was was never able to establish himself in any of them. Throughout his 7-year NBA career, the 11th overall pick averaged just 2.7 points and 2.7 rebounds per game. The biggest criticism he had was for not taking the game seriously enough. All the physical tools that got him drafted were hindered by the mental side of the game. In later interviews, Moisot admitted he often lost focus and didn't put in enough effort to succeed in the NBA. He next continued his career in Europe, but even there bounced around every single year and didn't establish himself as a great player. 
There are a couple of honorable mentions like Aleksandr Radojevic, whose career was plagued by injuries early on, or Slovenia's golden boy before Luka, of course, Sani Becirovic. His NBA interest got derailed by his 20s as he suffered major knee injuries very early. Plus, despite the fact he didn't live up to that NBA hype, he still had a solid European career. I'm sure there are plenty more what-if stories with injuries, so I'll be interested to see your suggestions in the comments below. Right, so what's the takeaway here? My main takeaway is that the hype for European big men was and will always be real in the NBA. But hey, for every flop, there's a success story. Guys like Dirk, Pau, Giannis and Jokic prove that European talent can thrive and dominate in the NBA. And that's what makes this so fun, it's unpredictable and it keeps us talking. Let me know which European prospects that didn't work out you would add to this list, also check out our second channel, like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.